I'm a little concerned that these sister wives reaction videos are just chronicling my personal drama on the internet. Uh, but, but here we are. So we've got a lot to talk about today. So first, Mary, if you've been following this, uh, last week I posted a video that was a reaction to episode two of Sister Wives, and Mary uh, misinterpreted something that I said, and she was frustrated by it, and then she posted a video on Instagram saying she didn't like what I said. I posted a reaction saying that's not what I meant, um, and we just sort of went back and forth, and some of the fans started writing Mary for her interpretation of my video. So I want to just let you know that Mary and I connected and we are all good. No harm, no foul. It was just a miscommunication. So Mary's good. The second piece of drama is this week, two days ago. So every week what happens is Sister Wives comes out. My wife and I watch it together. We record that reaction and it's a moment by moment reaction that we post pretty immediately. And then two or three days later, I post this video, which is a shorter kind of just supposed to be condensed reaction that I'm giving. So in the long form, moment by moment reaction, my wife and I were discussing this concept of triggered. And by discussing, I mean, my wife said, Cody's triggering me. And I said, no, he's not. He's not triggering you. Don't say that. And she goes, you just cut me off. That's triggering to me. And we had a, I'm trying to think of like, I think it's perceived by some to be a squabble. Um, and then everybody in the comments gets pissed at me for how dare I interrupt my wife. And then everybody says I'm worse than Cody and drama ensues. And what I'm not good at is seeing the drama. Like it, the, you have to understand the experience of the creator is there's one person that makes a comment and they are clearly don't know what they're talking about, right? Like I get people could say, I don't like what you did or the way you interacted with your wife. Fine. I, c I could take it. What I don't like is when they say, I don't like how you interacted with your wife. You're not a good person. You're abusive. You're as bad as Cody. You're, and they end up sort of talking about things that they know nothing about, right? Like no one knows about my relationship with my wife. And so it's hard when you have people like repeatedly commenting on that. And so what happens is, is I read it and I go, this is my experience. I go, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. What? That's nuts. What? What? And then at a certain point I go, what the hell? And then I end up attacking somebody <laughs> in the comments. I try to be nice, but I know that I'm a little bit terse and direct. And what I should do is just not look at the comments, but I am not good at that. So here's what I'll say is for those of you in the comments that I went after, I didn't go after anybody, but for those in the comments that I was more direct to than maybe I should have been, I'm sorry. And for those of you that have any questions about my wife and I, here's what you need to know for sure, is this is a fun experience for us. We're reacting to a freaking reality TV show. Neither Allison nor I were in any way upset at each other over that interaction. The, the behind the scenes is, and those of you that have watched this channel for a long time know, is that Allison and I always talk about this term triggered. And we talk about the fact that we can't stand that people overuse the term constantly. In fact, there's a video I will link here, which I have put on my other channel, explaining why the word triggered is misused and why misusing it is offensive and damaging to people who are truly triggered as a consequence of a traumatic event. So when my wife said, I'm triggered by Cody, I cut her off because I was like, ah, we don't say that. And then she goes, well, you're, and she was joking and laughing. And she's like, well, you can't cut me off because that's what Cody does or whatever. And we were playing. End of story. I thought it was a fun interaction. I thought that people would talk about it. I wanted to be transparent about how we navigate that kind of stuff. And it's really important to me that we don't position ourselves as the next, you know, Rachel and Dave Hollis who act like we never have friction. Like, I hope if you watch our reaction videos, you know that we talk pretty directly to each other all the time. It's just what it looks like. So everybody goes, David, you never apologize. Part of me feels like, I guess I'm sorry that it was misinterpreted. I'm certainly not sorry that my wife and I had that kind of conversation because quite honestly, we have that kind of conversation all the time. Do I interrupt her? Absolutely. Does she interrupt me? Absolutely. Should we stop it? Yes. Do we try to stop it? Yes. Do we still do it? Yes. It doesn't mean that we're malicious reoffenders or the next Cody Brown or abusive or that we hate each other or that there's that she ran off crying like that that train of thought that's on the internet is wild to me. Okay, enough of the drama. 
Let's talk about Sister Wives episode three. Before we do that, please hit the like button below. It's super important for the YouTube algorithm. Smash it, destroy it, click it, whatever all the cool YouTubers say, hit the like button. Let's talk about Sister Wives episode three. There was a lot that happened, so I'm just gonna kind of take it in order. So it starts off with Cody at one of his testosterone Tuesday meetings, whatever, a meeting with some of his guy friends and his brother, and they're talking about Cody's wives. And Cody at one point says, you know, when a wife is cantankerous, and he uses that word cantankerous, I want to be able to go somewhere else to another wife. Um, and then it's, you know, it's smash cut to Mary being like, that really disgusts me or something, that Cody thinks that way. On the outside, I'm looking at it going, well, of course that, it, like to me, someone in a monogamous relationship, of, like, of course it would work that way. I can imagine if you're having a conflict with one of your wives, what you want to do is go, I'll see you later, not deal with this, and I'm going to go somewhere else. What's interesting is that Mary was like, that is not how it's supposed to work. That is not the function of the three additional wives. If there's a conflict with one of your wives, you're supposed to deal with that conflict. You should be in the conflict and in the distress with that wife. Which I think if you if you sort of take a different view and you're thinking about how a polygamous marriage has to work, the husband needs to be fully invested in each of those relationships. When Cody gets in a fight with Mary and bails and goes over to Robin's house, he's not experiencing the distress in the same way that Robin is. And so I think that's why he's so dense when it comes to people's pain and distress is he has just throughout the last, whatever it's been, 20 plus years, 27 years, he's been able to just sort of bounce around and avoid the friction. Then after Testosterone Tuesday, Cody goes and has a massive conflict with Janelle. It's the one that everybody's been waiting for. It's the one that they teased in the trailer for this season. Cody goes and they have a super, what I would describe as a super dysfunctional conversation. In short, Cody walks in and blames Janelle for the destruction of his relationship with Janelle's kids. And Janelle says, you can't blame me, blame yourself because you set these ridiculous rules and you haven't reached out to them. And then Cody says, I've reached out to most of them and I've made myself available, they need to reach out for me. And they sort of just go back and forth, back and forth. Cody saying, this is all you, Janelle, because you've talked shit about me. This is on you, Janelle, because you're aligning with Christine. This is on you, Janelle, because you're not coming over to Robin's house for Christmas. This is on you, Janelle. Like, like just peppering her with this. And, and Janelle is saying, this is your fault, take accountability. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and there's a crescendo as they both add a new word to their lexicon, gaslight. I'm tired so of being gaslit by you You are gaslighting me. Now you are literally gaslighting. You're gaslighting me, Cody. That's why I'm saying he's gaslighting. That is not gaslighting. I, I feel like I'm being gaslit. And it drives me crazy because they're misusing the term. Gaslight comes from a movie in the 1940s called Gaslight, where a husband is a con artist and he intentionally creates an environment in the house that leads his wife to think that she's insane. She says, I'm seeing things, the lights are flickering, and he says, no, it's your imagination. He's, he's leading her to question her reality. It's a very intentional manipulation. That's not what's happening with Cody and Janelle. Cody and Janelle are fighting because they both see the world very differently. Cody is prideful, he's self-centered, he has a limited perspective, he has no ability to regulate his emotions. I think that he's super dense about relationships in general. Like, There's a lot of things that are leading Cody to be unable to resolve the relationship with Janelle. But I don't think he is intentionally manipulating her to question her reality for I don't know what that reason would be. And I don't think that Janelle is intentionally trying to recreate Cody's reality so that he thinks he's going insane. That's just simply not what's happening. And so the use of gaslight doesn't fit. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop complaining about it. Everybody in the comments yells at me like, David, oh, the, you know, the way the public is using it, 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 the term has changed. It means something different now. No, it doesn't. It just, I, I don't know why it bothers me, but it drives me crazy. So I'm gonna let it go. 
letting it go. Use the term however you want. You do you, boo. And then the fight continues to escalate and Janelle turns to Cody and tells him to shut his fucking mouth. Cody goes, that's it. I'm out. And he starts to leave. He's calling her a liar while he's leaving. He's not nice about it. But he's like, I'm out of here. Then she tries to grab onto his coat and hold him so that he won't leave the fight. He rips his hand away. He walks out the door. He slams the door. She says, fuck you. And the fight is done. And this is where people get mad at me again, but I feel like the the purpose of this channel is to talk about, like I want people to use this sister wives dynamic to learn something about relationships. We know historically there's been a lot of conversation about Cody's treatment of these women. And objectively, he has been absolutely emotionally abusive. No question. That doesn't mean that Janelle's behavior was right. My wife, I think everybody watching this show is like cheering, go Janelle, you got him back, right? But the reality is that behavior was super unhealthy. In a marriage, in any relationship, if you want it to be healthy, you do not tell the other person to shut their mouth. You don't tell them to off. I'm not trying to be a prude about it, but I want people to look at the behavior and go, Okay, so that behavior was negative. She should have approached it a different way. Just like, before you get mad at me, just like Cody should have approached the relationship and that fight in a very different way. As I'm saying it, I feel like I'm arguing with like an army of people that I know are mad at me about this, but I'm just telling you like that's, I, I really think that's the truth. Now, the most interesting part of this whole episode, my hot take is that I think Cody could have saved the relationship. When, when Christine went to Cody and said, I'm done, I, I think there was no salvaging that. After this big fight, Janelle kicks Cody out, take, makes him take all of his stuff out of her little apartment, and she's done also. But I don't think she's really done. I think that Cody could save the relationship if he put his pride away. I think, he would, I think it would require him to do two things. One, he would have to reach out to his kids and resolve that relationship. He would need to be the one that connects with them and apologizes. That's the first thing. And number two, he would have to treat Janelle fairly, just like he treats Robin, and he'd have to treat Mary fairly. I think Janelle wants equality in that relationship. If he would have been willing to do those two things, I think he would have saved the relationship. 